I'm Scott L. Miller. It is the 16th of October, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm gonna be doing a yogurt taste test with my children who are on the show from time to time. They were here for the Eclipse video just last week. We're gonna be trying out some Dos Pinos mix-in yogurts. I think you guys will find interesting if you're into yogurts and breakfast. Uh, milk product, dairy products, what are they called? And we're also gonna be talking about Melissa O'Neill's question about uh, power banks, UPSs, power supplies to deal with power outages and things like that if you're gonna be working online from Nicaragua and what kind of plugs and things you might need to worry about. So a little bit of a technical how to deal with power discussion for people who work online. We're gonna get to all of that right after the bump. came out, I was about to go for a walk, but my dogs were so excited that I was coming out to the yard that I had to stop and record in the yard instead. But I came out thinking it was a really hot afternoon and it's actually raining on me just a little bit. So we'll see how far we can get through the video. We did one just the other day where it actually poured on me as I tried to do the video. So we'll, we'll see how it works. Our first segment up today, the kids and I are gonna try some yogurts. We were up in Chinandega a week ago and uh, stumbled into an AM PM and came across brand new flavors. We had a whole line of yogurts available here that we've never seen before. So we were very excited to try these out. Unfortunately, I am just getting over bronchitis. I'm basically over it at this point, but I have just the time to have like one day left of my antibiotics and Luciana has been very sick and she is uh, at the maximum. She's like started like one day of antibiotics. So she still feels pretty crappy and uh, she can't really taste the thing so it's gonna be a little bit tough for her to do the taste test but we wanted to do it before the yogurt went bad uh, so she's gonna do her best but she can't can't really taste it but let's go to that all right today we are doing another taste test of food here in Nicaragua now in Nicaragua we have a hard time getting milk products we get milk that's not a problem but getting things that have a lot of uh, cream or specialty can be a little bit challenging Yogurt is made here, but mostly we get it from other countries and specifically most of our dairy comes from Costa Rica and Dos Pinos is the major uh, dairy in Costa Rica that ships to Nicaragua. So we're talking about Dos Pinos butter and ice cream and yogurt and products like that all the time. With their ice cream, their regular ice cream is pretty good. We like it, but uh, we prefer they have a high end ice cream that's a little bit more expensive called Delite and that is a little bit more expensive, comes in smaller uh, packages and tends to have more exotic flavors. Well, they also have, and we didn't know this until we just found this a couple days ago. We were in Chinandega, we went to an AM PM, and we're used to getting Dos Pinos yogurt, and they have these mix-ins where it's like strawberry yogurt with chocolate mix-ins or uh, vanilla yogurt with blueberry mix-ins. They have different things, and they're really good. And we just discovered that they have delite of their yogurt as well. So this is a creme brulee yogurt, and this one is a caramelized apple yogurt. And so we have six of these. We have two for each of us, and we each have our own colored spoon, pink for you. And Luchana already has her yellow. We would normally share the yogurts, but Lisa is currently healthy, except that she's lactose intolerant. So she has to take lactate to be able to do this challenge. Mm -hmm. Luchana has, we think, bronchitis, and I have bronchitis. So we don't want to spread bronchitis around. So we're each going to have our own yogurt. So we have a lot of yogurt to go through today, <laughs> but this looks really good. Like these are cool flavors. So, all right, where do we want to start girls? All right. I, I want to start with the caramelized yeah. apple. Caramelized <laughs> apple. All right, here we go. Let's open this up. Hopefully I'm wearing a camera. I'm sure it's so dark. It's not that late, but uh, we have a ton of rain. And so we were planning on doing this today and it is now so dark. Oh, check this out. I hope you can see this on the show. We've got like like apple pie topping bits to mix in. So I'm gonna do my best to show this. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's visible. This looks and smells fantastic. It does smell pretty smell good. It. Oh, that's really sad. Oh. All right. There's too much topping, it spilled on me. <laughs> There's a lot of topping. All right, let me know you guys are ready. Hold on. 
Take a lactate? Yep. Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is really good. That is a dessert yogurt. Mm. That's better than I was expecting. It just tastes like yogurt to me. No. So, we don't know where all you can get them. I suspect we can get these at La Union, so we're going to go check that out. But we specifically got these in the Plaza Feriones in Chinandega, which is right next to restaurants like Delice and Entree and Dragonfly. Right in one of the main strips in Chinandega. So pretty easy to get to. I wouldn't drive all the way to a super mini just to get yogurt, but if you're in the area, wow. Mm. The biggest thing for us, there's obviously a lack of variety of food in Nicaragua. And like yogurt. We only have two real yogurt suppliers, yes, and Dos Pinos, finding new flavors that are really good is a big deal. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Is it? Kind of reminds me a little of like an apple dumpling. Mm hmm. It's like an apple dumpling, but way more cream. Mm -hmm. That's the way my mom used to make it. Your grandma, she did apple dumplings with loads of vanilla ice cream. So it was really a lot like this. It's also, you know, cold. <laughs> she did so much ice cream that it kind of was. Oh. <laughs> the ice cream would melt and be like a cream all over the, the pie. I mean, some of it stayed frozen, but a lot of it was like this. Poor Donna. <laughs> all right, next up, we have creme brulee. Now, creme brulee is one of those desserts I don't think you guys have ever had. We talk about it all the time. I love creme brulee, but I've never found it in Nicaragua. It definitely exists, but it's rare because we have flan here but creme brulee is much better than flan even though they're related so but this has promise oh it looks good Ooh, okay this is gonna be very hard to see in the video but this is like a custard looking yogurt and these are like toffee crunch pieces i don't know this this looks good what exactly is a creme brulee the creme brulee is like a flan it's a custard with a sugar topping that is then torched to caramelize it on the custard so it's got a solid, if it looks like glass on top of custard, but it's sugar, and you break it with a spoon to get through the top. Uh -huh. And it's really delicious when done right. It tends to be a uh, very sweet but delicate dessert. It doesn't taste like flan, right? It does not taste like flan. Well, right. it does a little bit. It depends oh. on the flavor of each, because both can be flavored in some oh, other okay. ways. But typically creme brulee is vanilla flavored, but it is also popular to have, for example, raspberry. That's a from what okay are we ready mm -hmm. oh Chama's already into it oh fully mixed already <laughs> mm -hmm. okay this is not what a creme brulee tastes like but this is yummy it's interesting it's like soft toffee pieces in a kind of custard base The caramelized apple's the winner. Mm -hmm. But this is good. I would eat this. I mean, I wouldn't buy it again, but if it was the only thing, I would eat it. High praise indeed. I like the texture. It's like lightly toffee flavored, but with a texture more like granola. Hmm. Is it peanuts in it? It could be peanuts, but I don't think so. It's some kind of nut. Walnuts, caramelized walnuts. Oh. Uh, there you go. How does it taste? It's good. Oh, it's kind of nutty. Yeah. Sweet caramelized walnut pieces in a custard base. I only ever really had walnuts and pasta. So. I don't think this tastes like how I normally have walnuts. <laughs> Well, there we have it. Um, unfortunately, Luciana doesn't have very much opinion on these, other than they kind of feel like yogurt. Yeah. Weasel. I take back what I said about this being the only thing I would eat it. I want to eat it. I would just starve. 
Okay. You don't like it? He does not yeah. like this one. But the apple one is oh. good. Oh. Things oh, in good. it kind of feel like Pop Rocks. Kind of like Pop Rocks. They don't pop though. All right, I'm so glad that they were able to join me for that. It's so much fun when they come out and, and do those things with me, that and the eclipse and stuff like that. So uh, Melissa O'Neill asked that she and I believe she said her husband both work online as uh, ESL teachers, English as a second language. And so like most online workers, right, they work from a laptop and they need to have uh, some some consistency for that to be able to do their jobs and working from Nicaragua of course people are concerned about uh, power and, and uh, internet and those kinds of things so she's specifically asking about power it's what we're going to talk about today we talk about a lot right Nicaragua has a very different power infrastructure than the United States uh, and and that's one of the things that's very important to understand in general what we get here are uh, relatively short outages but they're common and in the United States uh, for the most part it's a big place so it varies a lot depending on where you live but for the most part in the United States you get uncommon outages that tend to be quite long. It is rare to have a power outage in the United States. Say that's only 30 seconds. That, that it happens, but it's it's an anomaly. And here in Nicaragua, a five to 30 second outage is so common that we basically don't think about it. Um, but it's also not really a problem because there's very little in life here that depends on absolutely continuous power. If we lived in the United States, I feel like a 30 second outage would be really noticeable and of course we notice it here with things like air conditioners turn off we have to turn them back on or a tv blips out or whatever but everyone's got laptops or batteries on their computers so those things just keep on trucking and the internet doesn't normally go out so it doesn't tend to have very much impact because you don't watch as much tv and like things like and like cooking is normally done with gas instead of electric so a lot of things don't get interrupted of course a microwave would you know put a battery on that but we use the microwave very sparingly this is actually surprising uh, that the lifestyle difference actually makes it less impactful. But we, if you're gonna be working online, definitely you need a battery backup. So let's talk about that. The first thing, let's start with her second part of her question. Uh, she asks is, um, what kind of plugs are you going to use here in Nicaragua? So Nicaragua is part of North America and all of North America, that's from Panama to Canada and everyone along the way, all use the North American standard. So the exact same plugs as the United States. Worth mentioning, like old portions of the United States, say if you were to buy a farmhouse built in 1900 and you weren't to redo it in any way, you would find that you had uh, plugs that were just two-pronged most places, ungrounded wall ports. That is extremely common here in Nicaragua because for those who aren't thinking about this, most homes are very old. The vast majority of homes in Nicaragua are quite old, predating the grounded electrical standards. In the United States, most homes are newer than that standard. Simply the way things are, the United States uh, doesn't keep houses as long and it builds more of them as it has more growth. Nicaragua has less growth and their houses last a really long time because they're made from concrete. The combination of things simply means that most houses here were wired for electricity before grounding was whether available or just not popular or unnecessary, whatever, it, you don't find much of it. So if you have things that have three prong plugs, grounded plugs, you will easily find a problem plugging them in. Now, she mentions that she's working with a Mac laptop. I have a Mac laptop myself and I know it uses a two prong outlet. So that isn't a problem. All your device charging is fine. But if you have a TV or something with a three prong plug, just be aware that you're gonna need an adapter or you're gonna have to simply be limited to those outlets that have three prongs which exist for sure but are uh, less common here in the house that I have for example for about one out of every ten plugs is a three prong and it's not truly grounded because there's no grounding in the house the whole thing isn't grounded so we don't have that capability so that's why they don't exist um, so they have to be faked if you're gonna do it so uh, it's just something you may have to address but by and large everything uses the North American standard also worth noting it is common here to use joint North American European plugs because uh, there is such a high frequency of people who either uh, uh, visit from Europe or that go back and forth. Remember, Nicaragua used to be a Spanish colony and its integration with Spain remains quite high. There are, in fact, uh, specific um, uh, travel benefits and visa-free zones and citizenship benefits and such in both directions between Nicaragua and most of the countries in the zone and with the mother country in Spain as they see it and as Spain sees it, its child colonies. So they remain very friendly and tightly integrated in a way that other countries are not because of that heritage. Much 
in the way that the United States and England remained very close for a very long time, it is starting to wear off. Not that they're not at a diplomatic level very close, but from a cultural level, they have stopped being quite so integrated. It's more like England and Canada. Uh, but in, in that regards, you will see European plugs, but almost always. I mean, I've seen only one or two exceptions ever. Uh, you're going to find that the plugs are that special type that allow North American or European, because having something that doesn't take North American and only takes European here would be a major problem. However, I do know a number of people who have ended up with European plugs here. I don't know any houses that are made with European only outlets, but I am aware that many stores, because we get our products shipped in from other places, not made for us, if they're bound originally or we're in a shipment combined with stuff going to the United States, Canada, Guatemala, Mexico, we're going to get normal North American standard stuff. But once in a while, shipments come from like overstocks of things that were going to Europe or whatever. And so it is relatively uncommon, but not so uncommon that there isn't someone in my house right now having to use an adapter to plug in a European charger to the North American outlets because we don't really have European outlets here in the house. We do have one or two. Um, they're the, the joint ones. Every outlet we have takes a two prong American plug. A few take a three and a one or two of them will also additionally accept European plugs. So don't be surprised when you see those. Don't panic. And if you're wondering what they look like, uh, the European outlets and the North American outlets are essentially the same. The European basically never have a third prong. They're just two prong and they're posts. Uh, and so if you get the normal two uh, post uh, North American outlet, they'll have little circles on the outside that are combined with the slits and they just uh, plugs right in. They work fine and it's very flexible. I wish everybody used those because then you just never have to worry about anything anywhere. It'd be fantastic if in Europe they did the same thing and let us play, but they very rarely do. Mostly you see it in this region. So as far as what do you need for battery backup? Um, Melissa asked, do we get a, a battery backup that goes for days? That's not realistic. You really never are gonna look at a battery backup that would go four days. That's not, not a normal thing. It's theoretically possible and depends what you're doing, but assume that's probably not what you're gonna do. But let's tackle that in a second. What I recommend, because I have one myself and it works quite well, is a Duracell. Uh, they call it a generator, but in no way whatsoever it is. It's simply a UPS made by Duracell. It's, it really makes me angry that they flat out lie about what it is. It is a common UPS, which is just a battery pack. Um, just like you get for your, your desktops all the time. Every company has them. But instead of being this big, it's it's this big and it's very hard to lift. It's the size of a small generator. It is a massive number of batteries and it's meant to power huge amounts of things for a long time, not keep your computer on for another 30 to 60 minutes, right? So it's a very different approach. Um, when I worked uh, in data centers, of course, that's what our batteries look like for servers. It's, it, this is more of a home form factor, but it's not larger than a standard UPS. So calling it a generator is beyond ridiculous and, and offensive, honestly, uh, that they think so little of us that we think it's generating power and not a battery. But it is a big battery pack. It is made by Duracell. They are sold here in the country. They're not that expensive. Um, and one of the things I like about it is that if we, in an emergency, it would last for many days and allow us to keep doing things like charging phones. In case of an outright emergency, true loss of power over an outrageous amount of time, we could keep phones charged and many of them. Uh, if you do have uh, an Apple laptop like I do, the laptop itself under full use typically lasts about 12 hours. And if I, so if I charge it two or three, maybe four times, in theory, I could get two or three days of work out of that, that battery pack if I was plugging it into nothing else. So that is worth considering. Um, normally what we do is we use normal UPSs, like the size you put on a desktop, um, and they will keep machines running because I use an actual desktop most of the time. I do have a laptop um, and I keep it charged so I can use the UPS with my desktop. If the outage is for a few minutes, that's fine. If it's gonna be really long, I can take out my laptop and keep working that way. You also wanna have a battery pack on a of course, your networking equipment, or it's going to be mostly moot that you have your laptop still working, what's it going to connect to? Uh, so you want to have a certain amount of power, and that all makes sense. And I do like having that really large uh, battery pack when I need it. And of course, you keep them charged all the time. They're always plugged in. That's what you run off of. Important to note is that you don't use batteries in that way. The idea of batteries is that they're going to help you get through 
maybe an hour, possibly a few hours of outage. They really shouldn't be designed to keep you going for days. That's generally a problem. Once you go beyond a, a small outage, you want to be looking at a generator. Generators only cost between four and $600 uh, to get into a small one, one that can power way more than that battery pack can. And then you can fuel them either with gasoline, probably not the way to go, or with the, the LP tanks that we use for cooking and everything else that you will already have you just have to have them for life here in Nicaragua. And so using those, it's very easy to get a constant supply of fuel brought to your house. You just call, have it delivered. You're already having it delivered for cooking. So it's very easy to have it delivered for that as well. And you can basically run a generator indefinitely in that manner. Uh, and they're very easy to use. Uh, they don't make a ton of noise. They do make noise for sure. Um, and uh, it, it's just, that's the thing you would do if you need that additional power. Then you have the option of running bigger things. You can charge all of your devices forever, often, you can run at least one air conditioner, which if you're here in Leon or somewhere hot like this, you're going to appreciate, um, or at very least keeping fans on. It's a completely different thing. When you're talking about getting a battery pack, you're talking about charging a laptop and you want to shut everything off that it isn't being used because you'll drain the battery faster. But when you have a generator, you just let it run and you use all the power that you can charge every device, keep using everything, run fans, do whatever you want to do uh, because you, you'll be able to keep your life moving. Um, so that's the thing that people do because it's so affordable and so easy and it, and it completely solves that problem if you need it. If you, if you simply don't need to go for that length of time, most people just don't bother getting one. Some, some standard UPSs and you're good to go. Uh, keep in mind that we've been here for nearly three years. We have not once encountered a day long power outage, let alone a multiple day outage. Now, of course, by saying that, of course, it's going to happen today, right? That's what it normally happens. When I lived in the United States, I from time to time would encounter weeks of outages. But here in Nicaragua, I've never encountered, and I don't know of anyone who has encountered an outage greater than most of a day. We've had some really long ones, and normally when that happens, I do an episode on the show about it as it's happening, because what else am I gonna do? I might as well go out and record, because my cameras are the things that are charged, and I can run down their back. It's a very practical use of the time, basically. Uh, so I simply use the time better, but that won't help you if you have to teach online. And so every time it happens, you guys know, because I'm recording something about it, um, unless it's the middle of the night. And we've never had one in the middle of the night. I think that went above like four hours. That's very rare. Um, overall, we do have outages regularly. Last night we had about eight, but I think the longest one was about four to six minutes, right? We're not talking about very long, not so long that we had to do anything to accommodate for it. Um, that's normal. That's what you do all the time. So little battery packs, you just ride through. You won't even, you won't miss a beat, right? Um, when it's longer and you're talking hours, at least in most of the country, that's pretty rare. It will happen for sure, but it is rare and not a big deal if you have a big battery pack that's gonna get you through several hours. Having an outage that is longer than a working day has happened maybe once or twice in the years that we've been here. And normally that was isolated to not a big outage, it was like right here, like the line was down in front of our house or whatever, and that caused us to be out but not other people, so it's a little bit lower priority. In those cases, you have the option of going and staying at a hotel or going to a coffee shop and working and charging up there and then coming home and get whatever. Like you can work around it. So that's generally not a big deal. And you don't necessarily want to invest in a ton of batteries or a generator to work around something that you could just go to the store and buy $4 of coffee and sit there all afternoon and solve it that way, right? Normally, it depends on your situation and where you're going to live and exactly what you need to do. But Normally, you're not going to need a generator. Normally, you do need battery packs. Uh, assume that if you're going to have a, an outage that is days long, that is so rare, you probably don't want to be accommodating for it. And let me ask you, if you're in the United States, where that is far more common, right? Dramatically more common. I can't state this enough. Yes, we have lots of little outages here, no question. But when it comes to big outages, the kind you're trying to fix, that is a normal thing in the United States and all but unheard of in Nicaragua. So if you're going on that extreme level of going to accommodate for that, let me ask you, did you accommodate for that in the US? Are you in the US with giant battery packs, huge solar systems, big generators to keep your house running now? If not, you certainly don't need it here where it's far less likely to happen, far less impactful, right? In the US, I've had two week long outages multiple times. Here, hitting eight hours is just as unlikely as two weeks there. So that's, that's very important. And our weather here is generally mild. 
in the times where you have the biggest outages is normally during big storms when it actually makes the temperature more mild. Yes, the rain is pretty horrific during the big storms, but that's when you're gonna get that. And so like air conditioning becomes not a thing. Fans may not even be a thing because you get a lot. The reason the power's out is because lots of wind, lots of rain, and then you're cool. It, it, so that can mitigate the factors as well. Generally, for the kind of thing you're describing, I think um, if you want a generator, that's fine. It's a cheap way to go to have a lot of peace of mind. Some good battery packs, absolutely. Using smart devices like the, the modern Apples with the M processors that use a fraction of the power, last way longer, have batteries that last just outrageous amounts of time. Those are going to work way better for you um, than, than really thinking a lot about power, right? It's important to consider, but you just don't need to accommodate it nearly as much as you do in the US. So think about what you do in the US and scale back and then make this little bit of change that it's lots of little outages. In the United States, you could go without a UPS and just suck it up, right? Ah, it's been two months and I had a five minute outage, whatever, that's fine. Here, yeah, those 30 second outages will cut your computer off and then you're rebooting and trying to get back online. Unless you're using a laptop, which you are, in which case you already have a battery you could really get by with no battery packs at all. I'm not saying you should do that. Definitely get a battery pack, but you're in a position where as long as your laptop is, is well conditioned and charged, I've yet to encounter an outage so large in Nicaragua that a charged MacBook wouldn't have ridden the whole thing out on its battery, internal battery alone. Never once would I have depleted a fully charged Mac laptop unless I was doing like video rendering, which I do a lot of, so that's a problem. But for like talking online, doing that stuff, absolutely the battery in that would have been enough so just hopefully that's enough to let you make decisions about what you need to do but really it's it's a much better situation than you're imagining different parts of the country will have different power there can be areas that have outages by and large it's extremely reliable other than the, the thing that i mentioned the few seconds here and there thanks for joining me like and subscribe more questions get down below scroll down ask away i love being able to answer these questions for you guys and of course if you'd like to buy me a coffee to help support the channel it very appreciated buymeacoffee.com slash scott allen miller post the links to this online tell family and friends to check out the show go watch an extra episode hit that like button that does so much to tell tell youtube hey this guy he's worth promoting you should uh, you should tell other people about it and youtube will be like yeah i like this let's tell other people and then it'll just explode everybody will be watching the show and moving to nicaragua it'll be it'll be crazy and uh as always i will see all of you tomorrow <laughs>